Today, we're talking about ND filters for the DJI Osmo Pocket and Pocket 2. I'm going to show you the ND filters for the Pocket Gimbal cameras and answer your questions of when and how to use them. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you where you can find some other filters which work for the DJI Osmo Pocket and Pocket 2. But first, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Chuck and this is Tech Travel Beyond for tips, tricks and reviews for tech travel and your life at home or on the go. So I just bought the DJI Pocket 2 and I also have the original Osmo Pocket. While they are great pocket sized gimbal cameras for stabilized video and photos, there are some limitations to how they shoot video and control bright light that hits the sensor. And that's where ND filters come in. Like the way you wear sunglasses when it's really bright, you can attach ND filters to your cameras in the same way to filter the amount of light hitting the sensor. Doing this ensures your image isn't overblown by the bright areas what you're filming. I bought the DJI ND filter kit from DJI for $55. And here's what you get. You get a carrying case, a cleaning cloth, a set of four ND filters. They're numbered ND4, ND8, ND16, and ND32. Each filter has magnets built onto them so you can simply pop them onto the gimbal's lens. And the nice thing about the case too, it also works with magnets so they don't fall out when you open the case. So do you really need to use them? Well on the DJI Osmo Pocket and Pocket 2, you have a fixed hole or aperture which lets light onto the sensor. Unlike a regular camera, you can't change that aperture to control light coming in and this is where using ND filters help. The ND filters have numbers where ND4 allows one quarter intensity of incoming light, ND8 filters to allow one eighth of the light, ND16 one sixteenth, and finally ND32 allows only one thirty seconds of light to hit the sensor. So how does this help? Well, it allows you to slow down your shutter speeds in really bright situations so you can have better exposure. In video, just like with photography, if your highlights are over overblown, you lose details of your scenes or images. If you shoot on manual exposure modes for video, you can also use a simple rule for video called the 180 degree shutter rule so you can have more natural looking movement in your videos. Using ND filters helps to filter enough light to shoot this way. So how do you do that when shooting videos? Well, you'll set your frame rate and then you set your shutter speed to double of the frame rate. So here's an example. If you're shooting at 30 frames per second, each image or video frame is captured at 1 30th of a second. So the shutter speed should be set to 1 60th of a second. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, then 1 1 20th should be your shutter speed and so on. This shutter roll creates less jittery and more natural looking movement in your video. It also creates the same natural look your eyes may see in person. You'll hear this as shooting cinematic video, but for me, it really means shooting less jittery, more natural looking movement, just like you see. So that's a simple formula to get more natural movement in video. And that stumped me for a while when I kept hearing cinematic thrown around so much. It's actually about trying to film action the way your eyes see it. In really bright situations when you're trying to film or create natural looking action, ND filters help so your videos aren't too bright with overblown highlights. If you get that and you're aiming for the same in your videos, let me know by hitting that like button below. But what if you shoot on automatic? Well, here's some simple guidelines for shooting with ND filters which helps to slow down your frame rates closer to the 180 degree shutter rule. These basic guidelines also help for the more advanced shooters as a starting point for picking out filters for your shooting conditions. And here they are. Use ND4 for overcast and cloudy gray days. Use ND8 for partly cloudy days with some sun peeking out. Use ND16 for partly cloudy days if you have more sun and use ND4 for a sunny and clear day. I found these guidelines on a case for some filters for a GoPro and they're a great reference for which filters to pick. You can also rewind this video so you can write these down but I also put these guidelines in the text description below. 
Now since cameras like the DJI Osmo Action and Osmo Pocket Series cameras have front facing monitors, you can try the filters and review how your footage looks. When I shot for some accessories for the DJI Osmo Action, I actually used ND filters for the outdoor segments because the tennis courts behind me were so bright. I recommend playing around with the filters and doing some test shots. As you get used to using the ND filters, you'll be able to remember, hey, it's really bright and no clouds, let's try ND32. So now, let's go outside and try this out. I'll show you how to use ND filters for smooth motion, and then I'll go to another situation where I'll use the ND filters to control some bright light behind me. Okay, so we're shooting here at the park to show you about ND filters, and right now I'm shooting on automatic. So this camera, the DJI Pocket, is probably shooting at a high frame rate, and you can see by the movement of my hand, that it's catching each frame and each part of the movement but not giving you enough blur to make it look really natural. What I'm going to do, since we're outside and it's pretty bright and there are no real clouds in the air, I'm going to pop on the ND32 and go to a, down to a cinematic frame rate to slow down that motion and we'll see how that looks. Okay, we're back with the DJI Pocket 2 and I popped on the ND64 because rule of thumb, there's no clouds in the sky and it's bright, direct sunlight. And so this is what it looks like with the ND64. The other thing I did was slow down my frame rate to 30 frames per second and I'm shooting at 1 1 60th of a second for my shutter speed. And so this is what the motion looks like when you pass the hand through the frame and you're probably seeing a little more blur. Now what I'm going to do now is go off to the tennis courts and show you the different graduations of the ND filters and how they can be used for other types of shots, say if you're talking in an area where the sunlight is really bright behind you and the area is reflecting a lot of that sunlight. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the DJI Pocket 2. I have no ND filters installed, but where I'm sitting is at a bright area where the pickleball courts behind me are in bright sunlight, and I'm sitting under shade. So what I'm going to do is go through all four filters to show you what it looks like to try to control the light behind me so you can see a little bit more of what's going on behind me. I can see it's a little blown out on the screen, and we're going to try to control that light and kind of balance the exposure of me and the stuff that's behind me. Me. So I popped on the ND4 filter here onto the DJI Pocket 2 and you're starting to see a little bit more of the scene behind me. I'm also in focus and also in a pretty good exposure, but we're going to go ahead and try to dim this down. Let's try ND8. So this is the ND8 filter here on the DJI Pocket 2 and you're starting to see a little bit more of the scene as I add more of a filter onto this camera to balance out the exposure. So I'm in focus and I can see that I'm also um, in pretty much correct exposure and the balance is starting to happen with the scene behind me. So you're starting to see a little bit more and since it's really bright outside I'm going to try the ND16 to see how that works too. And this is a scene with the ND16 installed onto the DJI Pocket 2. The light is starting to come a little more into balance here with the scene kind of being toned down behind me. The next filter we're going to try is the last one of the DJI Pocket filters that you can get from DJI, which is the ND32. This is the final of the four filters that comes with the DJI Pocket 2 filter kit, and this is the ND32. The scene behind me is a little more in balance as opposed to being so blown out, and this is what ND filters can do for you on the DJI Pocket 2. So as you can see by the footage in the last segment, the filters help like sunglasses would when you're outside. They help to reduce the bright glare you get when shooting video and create more natural looking movement. So who are these filters for? Overall, these filters are for most of you who shoot outside regularly with a DJI Pocket. If you want to shoot more advanced video using the 180 degree shutter rule to have more natural looking movement, then ND filters are a must for you. Now, DJI isn't the only maker of Osmo Pocket 1 and Pocket 2 ND filters. I've also had them from Freewell, and this set is less expensive and has six filters. It has the ND4, 8, 16, 32, and an ND64 filter along with a circular polarizer to filter out bright light reflections. Freewell also makes other filters for the DJI Pocket and DJI Action cameras. Another brand which is more premium are those made by PolarPro. 
But just like regular cameras, there are some variations of glass, materials, and grades of the ND filters, so I highly recommend looking at some reviews before you buy. Overall, I've not had any problems with Freewell filters, and I've used them for my GoPros and for my DJI Osmo Action. As I promised at the beginning, links to all these other options are in the description below. All in all, ND filters are a great accessory for your DJI Osmo Pocket or Pocket 2 cameras for filming in those bright outdoor conditions. So are you using ND filters? I'd love to hear from you. So let me know in the, what brand and how you use them in the comments below. As always, subscribe. Thanks for watching and check out this video right here too. See you in the next one.